Hey guys, it's Kim Jong Spoon, and today we're looking at the Tier 10 British Heavy Tank, the FV215B. I just finished up this line pretty recently, and I've really liked it. I'm, I've really started to like heaviums from playing the, well, the VK301P is pretty much a heavium, and I really liked it, even though it's regarded as one of the worst tanks. Uh, I really liked the Carnarvon, which was also pretty bad. VK4502A, pretty bad. And the reason they're all considered bad is because they don't have good armor, but they're mobile, so they're heaviums. They're heavy mediums instead of proper heavy tanks. And so the top three tanks in the British heavy tech tree are pretty much heaviums. All the other tanks are very, very, very heavy tanks. Like the Black Prince, that's an armored beast. But the uh, Carnarvon actually has effectively worse armor than the Black Prince. So it, it what's gained from getting worse armor is way better mobility and a really good gun. So uh, because the FV2 and 5B is pretty mobile, and while the armor isn't the best, you're still going to get a lot of bounces, actually. Uh, it's one of the reasons I really like it. Also, the gun is fantastic. Uh, it's effectively the T-125's gun with better accuracy, better aim time, better penetration, better reload. It's just, it's better in every single way. So, yeah, uh, FV2 and 5B armor is not the best, but we do get lots of bounces if you angle properly in side scrape. Because we have a rear mounted turret, it is a side scraping champ, and we have uh, pretty good side skirts and then thick track to absorb the damage. So, we are side scraping here on Copperfield. I said negative to this STI because he was going to block the, my side scrape. Uh, the STI has a much better position down the hill going hull down. The STI has a really strong turret. So if he goes hull down on the other, on the right side, uh, where Seb is right now, I'm platooned up with Sebastian1145, he's in his Jagdpanzer E100. If he went right behind Sebastian1145, he would be able to go hull down, and he's pretty strong that way. We have made a f complete fool of ourselves shooting at this KV-4 pretty early on. He's put one shot into us, we've bounced all of ours. I really hate shooting at KV-4s, it doesn't matter what I'm in. Pretty much the only damage we've done is take half the health off of a Tiger 2, so it's tier 8, and not a lot of contribution to this battle so far, but we've been bouncing slash soaking damage for our team. The reason that the KV-4 is able to penetrate that shot is because my lower plate was showing, so he's able to sneak one into the lower plate. But the KV-4's downfall is how greedy he is. He could have kept me pinned here forever, but he saw the side of a tier 9 and a tier 10 tank destroyer. Who's going to completely YOLO over the hill in front of myself and an STI. And he's going to get completely shredded because he did this. What he should have done is stayed side scraping, pinned us down, and waited for the mediums to take the side. There's an M48 Patton that is on full health on the right side of the map that is sniping. If he pinned us here and the Patton went around to our backs, we would have been caught in a crossfire and we would have been destroyed. So this patent that's sniping right here should have come up our rears, and we'd either have to turn to face him, and then the KV-4 could have shot us, or shoot at the KV-4, then he'd have side shots, or rear shots at us. We've put one shot into this patent, we're going to sneak another one into his turret here, and now it's a three-on-three. Three. What we want to avoid in engagements where you have equal number of tanks is one-on-one -on -one engagement. So if I were to face the Patton, I'd win, but I'd lose, hmm, he'd probably put two shots into me. This STI, I'm, I didn't know that this was a stock STI that our friendly STI was shooting at, but, you know, that was a 50-50 engagement there. T95 on perilously low health, so if the T95 died, I took a couple hits, and then our STI died, it would have been very difficult for us to carry this game. So, this 2-on-1 engagement minimizes the damage that we are taking, and then maximizes the amount of health left when we engage other targets. I kill the STI. Our Jelly Bean STI is being jealous and the patent has gone unspotted so we're gonna find the patent he's the obviously pr the priority target t32 is a tier 8 heavy i can with the exception of his gun manlet i can pretty much shoot anywhere in pen so there's the patent we don't want to take a lot of damage not because we're going to lose this game but damage ratio is something that people look at when they determine how skillful of a player you are and repair costs suck on tier 10. So we bounce his return shot and get the kill. T32 is looking at us, take it in the tracks, and our shell just dips right over the hill and bites him on fire. Our STI is coming around my rear, but I'm able to finagle the kill. Our jelly bean STI is jealous again. 
but we are able to get our top gun. So let's take a look at the post-game stats. Second class top gun, crucial contribution, 4,888 damage, 4 kills, 1369 base XP. Let's jump straight into the next game. I've yet to get an ace tanker in the FE2 and 5B, but I did get a first class on camera, so we're seeing that right here. I'm actually going to do less damage in this game than in the previous game, but because of the different XP coefficients that you receive from shooting tanks of different tiers, I'm going to get more XP. So if I shoot a tier 8, you get less XP than shooting a tier 10, because tier 10s are more valuable targets, and they're harder to penetrate and all that stuff. So. If you have an option, let's say you're going to die. You know you're going to die, and you know you're going to be able to get one more shot off before you die. If you shoot a tier 10 instead of the tier 8, you'll get more XP, more credits, and therefore it will minimize the repair costs and stuff like that, and will help you along your grind. Now, that obviously doesn't matter for tier 10s, but it'll reduce your repair costs because you're going to get more credits from doing damage to different tiers. So we're here on Falls Creek, and I decided to go to the cap because I do not want to be doing side-scraping engagements against super high-pen tanks like Jagdpanzer E100s, T124s, and E100s who are... I'm just assuming they all shoot heat shells. I pretty much only shoot heat shells in mine, with the exception of shooting at tracks. But, I mean, E100s with heat shells are much more fun to play than E100s with AP shells, because 235 mils of penetration is just not enough. T125 pulls back right as we pull the trigger, so we bounce that one off his upper plate. And I'm not super stoked right now because our T125 has maybe done one or two shots of damage and is about to be taken out. Yep, T125 tier 10 heavy tank taken out already, so I wasn't too stoked about that. I take out the cover of the T124. Our move is covered, so he has to move. He was pretty much hiding back there because he's on low health, but because I shot his cover, he has to move, comes forward, we can hit his lower plate and secure the kill. We have done like 100 damage, we've gotten one kill, so let's try to get those numbers up. The only tanks that aren't over here are their E100 and their Jagdpanzer E100. So we'll have to... Yeah, there's one of them. That sounded like an HE shell. Who's shooting HE at me? I have no idea. It could have been a low roll from the Agbanzer E100, high roll from the E100, I don't know. But they are both over there. Way over angled there, get my ammo rack damaged, but uh, now that I've set up the side skipping position, it's going to be pretty strong because they can't really penetrate me. So I'm talking to Sebastian1145 on the Skype. He says, hey, pull forward, I'll put one shot in. Bam! He puts the shot in. E100 next to me also shoots the E5, so I'm going to try to get this kill. Nope, that one went a little high and hit the the pike, the very front of his upper plate slash lower plate. So that is really thick armor and that bounced. You really have to hit the lower plate of the T110 series to penetrate. This E5 is on low health. We put one in and now he's a one shot for pretty much everything left. Yeah, actually everything left. You probably HE him. E100's poking around. Don't want to take a 150mm shell. We bounce one and we put one into his lower plate. I'm a little undecided here whether to help with the T-54, but uh, it turns out that he's not really a threat at the moment, so I decide, you know what, I'm going to go kill this E-5, and then I can push forward and deal with the, T the T-54 from behind. One to the side of the E-5, and now let's go pincer this T-54. Tier 9 medium tank, but it's very strong. T-54s are very difficult to deal with in very tall tanks like the E-100 because if they side hug you and get right along your side, you can't actually put your gun low enough to hit them. So it turns out we weren't actually needed dealing with the T-54, but we show up just in time to steal the kill from everyone who had already done damage. So that's three kills, two tanks left, can we get the top gun? It's always a quest for top gun when I'm playing. Top gun's probably one of my favorite medals, other than uh, Confederate. I really feel like they should add a high caliber medal which is, in WAPC, the medal you get for dealing the most amount of damage on both teams, because I feel like that is a really good indication on how much you work with your team and how much damage you do. Working this hill and moving back and forth, and because of the incredible accuracy of this gun, while moving, I'm able to hit the E100's turret. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Ooh, side shots, yes please. I open up my ammo menu, Turns out I won't need it because the side of his turret's aiming at me, but I decided to switch back to APCR just to make sure I penetrate. 
We can kill him if we roll normal for the next shot. 400 average damage. And he's on two health. Awesome! Load HE, but Seb gets the kill with his own HE show. Now there's just a Yadkins E100 who's been spotted over there. I'm not sure what position he's in, but there aren't really any strong positions for a Yadkins E100 to be in over there. And it's a 4v1. We should be able to get this guy pretty easily. The only question is, can I get a top gun? T62A is calling for help, and based on where he is, I'm sure this Yagpanzer E100 is hiding in this little alcove over here, behind where the E100s died. We come around the corner, I see where the T62A's turret's pointing, and that pretty much confirms that the Yagpanzer E100's right there. There he is, we're spotted, we do a snapshot. Doesn't pen, but this guy's in a horrible spot. He turns to me, the T62A can hit him. If he turns to the T62A, I can hit him. And once he fires, he's totally screwed. We'll be able to. DPM him during his reload, but he hasn't fired yet. Seb damages his ammo rack, so I'm going to try to ammo rack him here. Right in the middle side of the Yagpanzer E100's casement is where his ammo rack is. We don't roll high enough. Barely any health, and I'm just clicking the fire button. Reload, 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 reload. No, t 62 a don't do it. And we have two dots left on our reload before when the T62A secures the kill. No top gun for me. But that's okay, not every game is going to be a top gun. Let's take a look at the post-game stats. First class tank sniper, 4,565 damage, and 3 kills. So, how do I feel about the FV2 and 5B? I really like it. Uh, this is probably one of my new favorite tanks. And here's why. The gun is absolutely fantastic. I don't even have 100% crew, and the reload is amazing. You're able to DPM people. This has better damage per minute than the FV4202, and that has pretty good DPM. Uh, it also has really good penetration. Don't really have any problems with anything other than the fronts of E100s, or mouses maybe, or the upper plates of T1025s. But with 258 millimeters of penetration, there's not a lot of tanks that you'll have trouble penetrating. Maneuverability is a huge plus for this tank. Uh, 35 kilometers per hour off-road is really good. That's what I'm pretty much averaging when I'm moving off-road. The terrain resistance I feel like is really good. I really can't tell when I'm driving on sand versus driving on roads. And it turns really quickly, so T-62As cannot circle you no matter what they do. And it, it's not just that your turret can keep up with them, your hull can keep up with them. So they'll be shooting at your hull, and if they're really close to you, then they'll have to shoot at your upper plate, which is a pretty good angle. So uh, T-62As can get some bounces off that. Also, because it does have a rear-mounted turret, side scraping is a great tactic for this tank. You can keep your entire front hidden, and your super wide tracks and your side skirts and your side armor will just eat up shells. Heat shells will just get absorbed by your tracks and side skirts. And yeah, overall, I just love this tank. And you'll probably see some more videos about this popping up on our channel soon. Interesting thing to note about the FV215V, and actually its tier 10 brother in the British medium line, the FV4202, both of them are going to be replaced. The developers for WattPC have announced that they will be replaced by the Centurion Action 10 and by the Chieftain tank. I'm not entirely sure when they plan on doing that. I don't think anybody is. And actually, once they are replaced in WAPC, I'm not entirely sure when that will also be phased into Blitz. One of the things that makes me believe that it will take a while is the T-49 in Blitz. In PC, the T-49 is called the T-67 because the T-49 is a Tier 8 American light tank. And the T-49 in Blitz was released after the T-49 Tier 8 light tank was added to World of Tanks PC. So, I feel like the developers of the two games are a little bit separated as to the content that they're being added, uh, that they're adding to the games. So, I feel like once the Centurion Action 10 replaces the FE-422 and the Chieftain replaces the FE-2 and 5B on the PC version of World of Tanks, I feel like it'll be a while before it's replaced on World of Tanks Blitz. But we'll just have to see. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, you can subscribe, and stay tuned for more awesome tank videos. Thanks.